Welcome to the office. Between Armel smashing the 24 hours record, Thomas testing his patience and Lionel going over, the record hunters have had an intense week of racing. But first, the TP52's fleet is back in the States. The first stage of the 52 Super Series Americans show gets underway in Key West, Florida. Compared to the current America's Cup boat, one can argue that these monohulls look a bit has been. But how can we not be enthusiastic about these super high tech machines? This class is the most exclusive category on the planet when it comes down to technology. And when you're called quantum racing, you even use the services of your own drone before each race to provide extremely precise information. Accuracy and precision are paramount to properly sell these yachts. Clumsiness is not an option. During K-West, Quantum Racing shows what they are made of when they take the first three races win. A showdown with a powerful Azura team is not happening and it is Ran who manages to get a second place. The perfect conditions, with wind blowing over 20 knots, allowed Doug DeVos's crew to consolidate his leadership on the last day. With five wins out of ten races held, Quantum Racing and her drone win the first stage of the 52 Super Series. Feels wonderful. I love this place. We've been sailing here for so many years and uh, a lot of years uh, we weren't even close to the leaderboard, you know. Uh, but we just love the event, we love the location, great sailing conditions, so it feels great to be able to come back here uh, sailing with everybody and, and, and do well. The fleet will gather in Miami in early March before returning to Europe for spring. In the family of the record hunters, one is laughing, another clinches his teeth and the third is sobbing. Enjoying a perfect weather window, Bank Populaire leaves Cadix in the evening of January 23rd to launch an assault on the Atlantic crossing record. Although the conditions are tough, the Maltel is sailing an almost straight line across the Atlantic towards the Bahamas. Hitting top speed in excess of 35 knots, Armel Leclerc is pedal to the metal. We are starting the year with a new 24 hours record. Between yesterday and tonight, we covered 682 nautical miles. Credits must go to the boat and the whole team who prepared here so well. That's an average speed of 20 plus knots during 24 hours. Let's enjoy how it feels on board for a few seconds. Checking on Sodebo's position on the map as she's traveling along the coast of Brazil, one might say that Thomas is enjoying a coffee break. The boat is going straight, the sea is completely flat and we still have 18 knots of wind to be exact. The boat is sailing between 27 and 32 knots of speed. This is really nice sailing and the temperature is ideal. It's pitch dark and you can't see anything. Although the selling conditions are fantastic, Sodebo is falling behind the record time established by Francis Joyon. The bleeding will continue as Sodebo has a gigantic St. Helen High to deal with. The weather situation is quite complex and Thomas has no choice but to sit tight and wait. But for now, he just enjoys the moment. Monday at precisely 3.57 p.m., the skipper of the Maxi Tramaran Prince de Bretagne, Lionel Le Manchois, manually triggered his distress beacon. Contacted by satellite phone a few hours later, Lionel tells his team that the Tramaran had capsized. He was sound and safe inside the boat's central hull, but was forced to cut a rigging. 
The Maxi Trammer and Prince de Bretagne left Brittany on Friday, January 17, to tackle the Mauritians' record held since 2009 by Francis de Joyon. When the beacon was triggered, the trimaran was approximately 800 nautical miles off the Brazilian coast at the latitude of Rio de Janeiro, sailing upwind in a breeze between 16 and 18 knots. Rendezvous next week, same time, same place. Until then, goodbye and fair sailing.